always been interested in boxing and I've always wanted to open my own club eventually, being a, a boxer myself, following all the old greats, Mamad Ali, Fraser, uh, 70s fighters. Um, I got older, I wanted money, I was going out. You know, I wanted to coach, you know, I always had this thing about coaching. It was a struggle trying to open somewhere because where we are is rural, because it's just not possible. When it came down to what I was going to get paid or, or what was going to happen, I, I, you know, and there were a lot of interest in uh, calling midlife crisis, whatever you want, but I enjoyed every minute of it. You know, and, and a great interest because there's been no boxing here since for over 28 years. I've struggled in my life, but I made my, it, a lot of it, I made my own struggle. But when you struggle, you, you can you can have a, come out good or you can go backwards. And I found that we won the, a national title. On the way to winning the national title, there were a few boxers, they won the court county title. Sort of a defining moment for me, I, and you know, it's like a big family. So we, we created history that way. We're trying to look ahead and get court boxing up there and back on the map. I mean, we don't get paid for it. Obviously, like as, as we all know, COVID, it held things up and it, it made a mess of things as well. A lot of clubs couldn't come back. At the moment, it's cheaper to go fight abroad, you know, and it is. We have to do what's best for the boxers. Other sports have way more money than boxing. Way more money. Um, that's a good question, really. It's a hard one to answer as well. Um, because there's, there's so many things. My name's Will Russell. Um, I'm a blowing, as, as they'd say. Um, originally from Burnley, England. And I've always been interested in boxing and I've always wanted to open my own club eventually. Being a, a boxer myself when I was younger, not a great boxer, don't brag to be great then. Um, and then I started up boxing again later in life, at a very later age, in my early 40s, doing the Masters boxing. So, you know, and I've always had a passion for it since I was a young boy, following all the old greats, Mamad Ali, Fraser, uh, 70s fighters. And trained when I was 13 um, with my cousins. I was bullied at school. It was something that my cousins were doing and they, they asked me if I wanted to go and ended up going and meeting some great people out of it, you know, that's always stood by me, you know, and kept me in good stead. I was good at sports, but I wasn't much good at a lot of other things. Art, I was good at art, but as far as, you know, being totally academic, I wasn't. So I lived my life basically right up to now, being 55 year old now, um, in sport. So i uh, been through a lot in my life, good and bad, obviously. Um, very lucky to be around. So I'd like to uh, give something back to sort of help kids um, try and be sort of a life coach to, to young'uns, male and female, you know, and, yeah, and I, th I find that you can do that in boxing. It helped me and it's helped a, a, a lot of others in, in my family. So just, just basically giving it back. Well, I started when I was at school. Um, like I said, it wasn't any good. But I, did, I worked hard and I, I tried. I could have been good. I could have been better than I was. Not Maybe I could have been good, maybe, I don't know. But I, things kept getting cut short through situations, in, you know, life, basically. Um, I got older, I wanted money, I was going out. You know, girls drink and everything else and blah, blah. And then I got into weights. I was always into weights as well. So I discovered a bit of bodybuilding. I got into that, which I really enjoyed because I learned a lot about nutrition. And, um, and my body and how it works. Then I was always in and out of boxing then. Now and again, I would go train. You know, I'd always miss it, but I was more dedicated into, into bodybuilding then. I did a few shows. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I, I did learn a lot. But then I got back into boxing when I got, I got in, come to Ireland. Uh, I came to Ireland in 2000, so I've been here 23 years now. And I was bouncing, being a dorm and door security in a, a, a club in Formoy. And I worked there for five years or something. And what I did was um, I met a few fellas there. They had boxing clubs and I was eventually trying to uh, get my coaching badges for, for, for the IABA, which is the Irish Athletic Boxing Association. So I wanted to coach, you know, I always had this thing about coaching. I did a bit of coaching with the juniors in England when I was boxing, which I, I really enjoyed. 
So I've always wanted to try and do that, you know. And having more experience in my life, later on in life, I just thought I could give, like I said, give something back, you know. And eventually, it was a struggle trying to open somewhere because where we are is rural, and there's not many places that you you can get anywhere to, to rent or, or to jump in, you know, rent a bit of space or, or try and get a, a derelict building because it's just not possible. So we ended up, I ended up, um, doing personal training. I was with another club, I was helping them. I ended up doing the personal training in their club and um, I was helping that club out, which was okay, it, it, it served a purpose. I was with Kinsale Boxing Club for a while, but I, I went on then to do my own thing. So then I went, I went personal training and I moved away from Kinsale, which was where, was, where the boxing club was. And I, 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 I went to the, uh, to the community hall there and I was doing sort of personal training, exercise, things like that, just to get, to, to try and move forward, to get a platform. And um, it worked, it was good. And it, it, as far as the platform was concerned, it did work because I had somebody get in contact with me from, uh, from Corsi Rovers. They were trying to do a fundraiser for um, two GA clubs to get together and put on a fight night. So they asked me to train them. Courses versus Kill Britain, yeah, yeah. It was successful, it was really good. Something I really enjoyed and I could use their facilities when it came down to what I was going to get paid or, or what was going to happen. We, we, got a lot of, um, we got a lot of equipment, so for the, for the payment, I decided to keep the equipment. And um, I also asked them if I could rent a space in the gym so I could open the boxing club and there were no problems at all, you know. Which again, I really thank Thank Corsi Rovers for doing that, you know, especially the committee. It was okay with it, generated a bit of money for them, and it kept me, give, gave me a platform to, uh, to become the Corsi Boxing Club. Give me a platform to get here now where we are situated in Bandon. When was that? Like what year or what day? Is oh, around right. two. And what was the progression from there then? 2016, we, uh, we started, and I, I, I applied for affiliation with the, with the IABA. To make it all official, and you know, we didn't I didn't want to anything to do with white collar events or anything like that. We wanted to be able to fight for your county, and uh, you know, your monster areas, and then eventually national and so on and so on, and maybe even international one day. Who knows? So that's the the kind of area I wanted to go at. So I started off just myself, we grew and grew and grew. But, you know, people were interested. There's never been a boxing club. In, in Balance Spittle, there, was, there were two, two good boxers, apparently years and years ago, going back to the 50s, Tig, I think it's Tig O'Donovan. He was, um, he was a weightlifter, champion weightlifter, and also dabbled at boxing. And there was Joe O'Regan, um, who's still around. He's, I think he's about 85 now, 86. And he fought in a boxing club. I think it was Gagging Boxing Club in, in Bandon. And the, there was another one. I can't remember now. There were a guy there called George Bennett. He formed he formed the boxing club. I think it was near it were Ballinhasig way. So there was Ballinhasig, and then there was Round Here, which is uh, Gagging, just outside of Bandon. So then were the two clubs at the time uh, when they were there. So it was a new thing basically to the area. So I, I, you know, and there were a lot of interest in it. So I just basically plodded away with it really, just step by step. And it came to stage in where you needed to kind of move on from it, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we were, you know, things were going great, and then obviously, as everybody knows, COVID came, ruined a few things, set things back because we had a lot of plans. Uh, I'd just come back from America because uh, I was fighting in my 40s. I was doing the Masters division, and I, did, I, had, a, I had a lot of fights in America. Uh, call it midlife crisis, whatever you want, but I enjoyed every minute of it. And I made a lot of good friends over there. So as things grew, or, or in, in Balance Middle, we were getting bigger and bigger. So um, we had to move out really and get a... We wanted more nights, we wanted more time, more days, and we could come and go when we wanted. And obviously the GA wanted to do their thing, I wanted to do their thing, which is absolutely no problem. And we left on great terms, and I got this building here, which we're situated in now in Bandon. And from the day one we opened, I've never looked back, never looked back. Best move that I ever did. More people, just just everything about it. We just create atmosphere in here. Generalising with more people, 
you know, and, and a great interest because there's been no boxing here since for over 28 years. So w when we had our first show, uh, we had a novice show and then we had a, an, an opening, a grand opening. The IABA came down to open it up. Um, we had some great fights that day. I remember the a few old, older fellas who came to watch boxing going back, they were in their 80s, 90s maybe, you know, and they were, they were saying that, you know, it's a great to see boxing back in Bandon. You know, it's well done, you know, brilliant. which were great. Nice rewards, verbal awards, talk, it's better than a real award, if you know what I mean. It's great to get that feedback of, it's great to see this back, you know, so it makes it all worthwhile what you're doing, you know, it, it's working. And we, we've changed a few lives around here as well, even in the short time. There's a lot of people coming to the club, keeping them off the streets, which is what we like to do as well. Also, trying to give them life experiences um, from my life and from things that we know, people going down the wrong path, trying to get them coming into the right path. You know, and we're, we're there to help as well. There's only so much we can do like anybody, but we like to guide them on the right path. And uh, that, that's where we're at at the moment. Yeah, that's, that's, that's unreal, yeah. Yeah. And it's also like with, um, with where you are right now, why, like, why, I suppose why is boxing so important? And why does it mean so much to you? And well, when, it, when you're going to work boxing, what does it mean for you? <laughs> It means so much to me. I just, I, I'm so passionate about it because I just, I've struggled in, in my life. But I made my, well, a lot of it, I made my own struggle. But when you struggle, you, you can you can either come out good or you can go backwards. And I found that doing sport, I came forward better. I feel that boxing had that because it's, it's everything. It's emotion, it's mentally, it's physically. It's everything, it's a full package. You're in there. It's the only sport where I know where you you have to think about things while you're getting hit. And you have to be constant, you can't stop. You have to be super fit. The rewards you get from it are, are, are absolutely amazing. You know, it's not just the medal or the trophy, it's the idea, I made it. I did the three rounds and I, I made it. I might not have won, but I made it. So I like to revert that back to him and said, yeah, you made it in the ring. So you can go and make it outside, outside this building now, in a job in a situation, a family situation, in a situation of um, being oppressed in, in some kind of way. So, you know, it's a learning curve, basically. I would get people in here who, who will go in and spar or they'll go and do a few fights and you never see them again, but they've always been uh, complimentary after, later down, a few years later. I mean, I know I've changed some lives around, which I had to do in the village, there were a few people there who went through hell, which nobody knows about, apart from me and a couple of others in the club. And we helped them and guided them along the way and they've done brilliant. So it, it does help. And any sport can help. But I just feel that this sport, because it's so demanding, I just think it can really push the limits, make you more confident, make you hold back on things that you shouldn't do. Yeah, I suppose you had your most recent national champion. One of yeah. the medals here now, I suppose. Let's, let's talk about the success of the club so far. We won the, a national title. On the way to winning the national title, there were a few boxers, they won the Cork County title. Then you move on to the Munster title, which they won. Some of them didn't get through. Um, and the ones that do get through from the Munsters, they go to the national, the All-Ireland title. And we had a girl there. We actually had two girls, uh, Alana and uh, Nina. They got through to the uh, nationals. And we got a silver medal in the nationals and we got a gold medal, we won. And then we moved on upwards to a higher level, which is the Cadet National, and we won that as well. So we got double gold this season so far, yeah. And we're just, we're at the end of the season now, so we're starting the 2023-24 season in September, whereas last season was 2022 to 23. So, but we've, we, yeah, we've done well. Um, we, the club got awards. Um, we got an award of Zaya Zante, who's the head coach of uh, International Irish Boxing, which was, was a great honour, actually. A, sort of a defining moment for me. Uh, and, you know, through the Cork County Board as well, they were extremely, you know, good to us as well. You know, we, we got a lot of support of other clubs around as well. It's like a big family. You know, I've never, this is the other thing about the sport. I've never known, I've never known people in boxing who, who will absolutely do anything for you and not want anything back. You know, and it, I, I've never seen it like that. It's an amazing thing. You are literally like family. I could pick up the phone 
to a couple of people, a couple of coaches, a few coaches in Cork, and I asked them for something, and I know that they'd do it, which is amazing. I couldn't get, I couldn't get that off some of my family, but you know, so it, it's a testament. It sets a, it sets a standard that's, you know, it's just, it's unreal. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. We, we also, um, we created history, obviously, by winning national titles in Bandon that hasn't been done for 28 years and opening a club which hasn't been done for 28 years or more. So we, we created history that way. Uh, we also created history by um, taking uh, a group of boxers from Cork as Team Cork over to Pennsylvania. We were the first Irish club ever to hit that part of Pennsylvania to fight as a team, which, which was a huge success. And we're going back again in September again. Uh, so we've created a, a bond there and a relationship where we hopefully we can do this once a year. And myself and um, John Morrissey from Golden Gloves, a good ex-boxer from years back, good friend as well, where we collided together basically and coalition, not collided. We've collided a few times in a good way, <laughs> but uh, we've got a coalition together so that we get the teams around us from all different clubs in Cork, make it everybody, you know, all different for different boxers from different clubs. So we go uh, over to America and, and fight in the, uh, it's an international, but it's it's Cork versus Scranton, basically, that's where we're going. So Cork versus, Team Cork versus Pennsylvania, but it's a big place, it's Pennsylvania, so you, you balance it out. But it's, it's great. It was such a success, absolutely amazing. And then they went, they went to Pittsburgh using the same promoters that I have. Um, you know, he was saying there, could we go? I said, of course you can go, you know, I mean, it's for all of us, so let's let's work together on it and keep keep the consistency going between, you know, USA and Ireland, because it's a good relationship that we seem to be forming and we, we're seeing ahead, you know. We're trying to look ahead and get core boxing up there and back on the map. I mean, we don't get paid for it. You know, we, we, we're just doing it because we don't like hearing that core boxing's got a bad name. You know, some people would say that. I don't think it has a bad name. Uh, you know, I just think, you know, people should get together and do more instead of cribbing and moaning. That's, that's, that's the way I feel about it. And that's, that's what I'd have to say if, 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 if I saw anybody else, you know, my peers above me or around, I'd say the same thing. If you're not going to get up and do something, then it's not going to happen. If you want to wait for it to happen, it's not going to happen. So, you know, obviously we have to go through the channels, the right channels of meeting the county board, and then going through months of council asking permission, can we do this, can we do that? You know, and we've been granted it, no problem. So, you know, and we do it respectfully, um, you know, because obviously we're going to a different country. We, we're approaching new directions, so we have to go within, you know, within the rules, basically, which we, which we do. And, you know, it's good so far. Where are we going to see Cork Boxing go over the next couple of years? Give the boxers, you know, more, um, more attention in shows, you know, uh, different shows being held locally. We see, we have to travel around the country. You know, we have to go up to the National Stadium, obviously, because it's the National Stadium, and it's where the big events are. And then we have to go down to Limerick and places. I mean, you know, there should be more pumped in, into court boxing so that we can have things here as well. And then they can come here, north and south or whatever. You know, um, we can mix it up. There's always somewhere to go, basically, to have have events, tournaments. There are tournaments, but they, there's not just there's just not many in Cork at the moment, and there should be. There should be. We we need help, basically. You know that's that's why it has struggled. But I will say it, it's come a long way um, as boxing in the last 10, 15 years. Easy, it's come a long way. Obviously, like as as we all know, COVID it held things up and it made a mess of things as well. A lot of clubs couldn't come back. You know, we, we was lucky at the time. We, we could freeze our rent when I was over in, in courses, which was, you know, a blessing. Because being here now, I don't know what would happen if something like that happened again. And God willing, it won't happen, so. Yeah, so you said we're probably like you coming to the end of the 2022-2023 season. Yeah. So it's then moving into 2023 20, 24 Yeah. We, we're like, what's, what's the plan now? What's well, the plan? more titles. What's next for the course? Yeah, yeah, more titles. This time, try and get, you know, a couple more national titles with different boxes, same boxes, fair enough. Different boxes, great. You know, we, we're going down the same channels again as, as Cork, 
Monster uh, Nationals and then hopefully we'll get a few box cups in as well. There's a lot of provinces and areas that do box cups, like you've got the, uh, the Esker all-female box cup, which is great. It's, it's a big one, it's one of the biggest in the world, really. If you think, there's not many all-women all boxing uh, tournaments that I, I know of. Uh, there's one in Sweden, I think, but you know, I think, I think the one in Lucan, little Mia Lucan, or Ed Griffin from Esker Boxing Club runs, I think he, he does a great job with that. The thing is, it's, at this present time, in this economical world we're in, Things are expensive, you've got the diesel expensive, you've got to stay up there, it's travelling expenses. Works out a lot of money. And unfortunately, at the moment, it's cheaper to go fight abroad, you know, and it is. We have to do what's best for the boxers, you know, especially if there's more facilities around in other areas than Cork, then we, we have to facilitate our boxers any way we can. And to me, that, that just that's what I'm trying to do. And, and, and if I can take a few people along with me, I will, you know, from other clubs. And that's what, yeah, yeah, that, and you know, to try and progress them. You've got to, you, you can get stale, can't you? You go around meeting the same people, sparring and getting fit, getting ready for sure, for, for competitions and things like that. But it, it can get stale because you need different direction of boxers. You need different styles. You need tougher, you know, uh, different standards to, to chase. It's like any sport. You have to raise the bar. So by doing that, I think what we are doing and traveling around, it's a great opportunity. Like for any young boxers out there now, up and coming boxers, like what is your piece of advice? Like what is your message you want to send to those people? To young boxers, just keep at it. There's too many young ones they give up too soon. They want the they want the winning and the glory too soon. You know, they have to learn to be patient and fight for it, work for it. You see, when you do that, when you give yourself time to work for something and lead up to something, you, you have a good distance of learning. When you're doing it short term, if I don't get it now, it's no good. And if I can't win it in that, at that time, then you know, then, you, then you've got a short period. You learn more in the longer period. It's the patience of, of uh, the young ones. It's, you've got to have it. You know, you've got to keep persisting, keep going, keep working, you know, and it reverses itself. Because when you go out and you do a job and you don't want to do it, but you have to do it, then you'll learn to persist. The same, it all comes from sport. And it does, you know, 100%. You know, I'd, I'd say, you know, give it time, whatever sport you're doing, take your time getting fit. Don't get fit too quick because you're not giving your body a chance to develop. You're rushing into things where you could do more. You could gain more, gain more experience, get more accolades than doing it in a short period of time and, and getting it wanting to do so quickly. That's, that's my opinion, you know, that's the way I feel about it. And uh, give it a try. You don't have to come in and just, you can learn to box for fitness. Best way to get fit, boxing fitness, for any sport. Quick, quickest way to get fit. Short bursts, energy levels, rising fast. How can't you not adapt that to any sport? You can adapt it to soccer, any GA sport. It can all be adapted into sport. Rugby, short bursts, energy levels bursting. Yeah, mindset, the whole thing. And it keeps the, it keeps the boxing world you know, in the circle, keep, keeps it um, churning over, keeps it ticking over, keeps the money orientated, because we're non-profit, we need the club. And that's the other thing, we're not getting uh, funded as like we used to do. Other sports get more funding than boxing. That's a fact, you know, and we need money, because the equipment is so expensive. To say now, one child there wants to get kitted out to box. You've got gloves, 150 euro. You've got headgear, 150 euro. That's 300 before you start. That's a lot of money, you know? So, and then you've got the traveling expenses, everything, this is just so much, the boxing boots. It's just, everything's expensive. So when every other sport commits to the, the sports, the non-profit sports, by just coming in, working out a training regime with the club or whatever, working out to their fixtures and, and fittings, if you will, then it works and the money circulates. Everybody's started to generate money and that's the only way to do it for everybody basically in sport to work together. Other sports have way more money than boxing, way more money. In the sport of boxing, what would you like to see done differently or improved? Um, that's a good question really. It's a hard one to answer as well because um, there's, there's so many things. Basically, j just put more money into the sport so more things can be developed for everyone. You know, we've only one high performance 
centre in, in, in Ireland, which is the high performance up at the side of the National Stadium. And it's a great facility. You learn, learn so much when you go up there, when you've been invited, you know. That's the point, when you win a cadet medal, a national medal, you're then invited to go and fight for your country or go and train with your international, you know, uh, boxers.